Hi everyone, Dr. Frankie Bichon here, and it's Thursday, and this is Ask Dr. Frankie, and an opportunity for me to answer common questions that I get on a regular basis, whether it be in session with clients, whether it be coaching clients, therapy clients, matchmaking clients, um, or people write in questions, um, or they post them to YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, and so on. So I take this opportunity to kind of answer common questions that I get. And um, the idea is to give you helpful tools, suggestions, and that you can use in your daily life to live healthier, happier, have healthier relationships, grow yourself, continue to like increase your vibration so that you're attracting the right people into your life, whether you're single or partnered, it doesn't matter. You want to have good people around you, right? So you want to be aware of unhealthy behavioral patterns that you may be engaging in yourself or there are people in your life that aren't that healthy themselves that really you may evaluate and decide that you actually don't want to keep them so close or even in your foxhole because some people just drain us of our energy or they're toxic to be around. And sometimes we have to learn how to recognize when that's the case. Um, be comfortable about setting boundaries and being able to identify what it is that's happening that's causing us to feel that way and feeling empowered enough to actually set boundaries. And then how do you execute those boundaries? What does that look like? So these are the kind of common topics that I cover, whether it be recognizing red flags, yellow flags, orange flags, what are boundaries? How do I set boundaries? How do I maintain them? And today we're going to talk about gaslighting which is a really, really, really common behavior that folks see out there. And lately with TikTok and Instagram, there are many influencers, people out there that are talking about gaslighting and they're describing it in ways that it isn't actually accurate. So I thought that I would help you all kind of get a different perspective maybe um, and share with you my understanding of gaslighting. And before I jump into today's material, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I'm Dr. Frankie Bashan. I am a board certified sex therapist. I'm a clinical psychologist, have been practicing for over two decades, and I'm also the CEO and founder of Little Gay Book and Little Black Book Matchmaking. So if you're single and you're looking to get yourself out there and meet quality people, get into our database, click on inquire, have questions reach out to us. We can talk to you all about matchmaking and how we may be able to support you in finding someone amazing to share your life with. So subscribe, click below. I think it's like all notifications. Anytime we post a new video for Ask Dr. Frankie or Love Laughs and Lessons, which is my weekly podcast that I co-host with Denise Ray, and we cover all different topics. We always have a weekly guest on. Um, so subscribe and you'll be notified immediately when we post. And for those of you who have subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. I so appreciate your love and um, share, comment, like, and all the good stuff. And I'll keep doing what you all like me doing, which is showing up here weekly with um, really important, good topics to cover. All right, so we're jumping in. So what is gaslighting? Navigating dating, sex, and relationships has, in recent years, meant learning a lot of new vocab words from avoidant to trauma bonding, a lot of the pop psychology we use to talk about how people form romantic relationships have bled into our broader collective life. Perhaps no term has taken off so decisively as gaslighting, something that's now used to describe everything from political discourse to a restaurant menu in an episode of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. But what does gaslighting actually mean? And why is it so important to know about in the context of its original meaning, interpersonal relationships? So why is it called gaslighting? To understand what the term gaslighting means and how we use it today, it helps to understand its origins. In the 1944 film Gaslight, a young woman played by Bri Bri Ingrid, I was going to say Bridget, Ingrid Bergman, new husband begins calling her experiences and memories into question. He says he thinks she's suffering from kleptomania and that she's stolen items from friends and from him too. Later, she finds those items in her own possession, though she can't remember taking them. He tells her that events or items she does remember, like a cryptic letter, never existed. 
her perception of reality is then altered. Crucially, as the young wife notices the gas-powered lighting in their home flickering on and off, her husband tells her she's imagining it. He doesn't see any problem with the lights. He tells her that her late mother actually had a mental illness she was institutionalized for, and the woman begins to believe she is in fact crazy and not a reliable narrator of reality. In fact, the new husband is a criminal and a murderer. He's only married the woman to get access to her house because he believes there's treasure hidden inside of it. All of the preceding events of the film have been a concerted effort to make his wife believe she's insane in order to disempower her as a potential threat, to isolate her from others, and to make sure any accusations she makes against him aren't taken seriously. What does gaslighting look like? Looking at the source text, you can see that gaslighting refers to when someone intentionally and systematically calls into question someone's real experiences with the express purpose of making them doubt their own sense of reality and or make them appear unreliable to others. This psychological manipulation is a sign of a toxic relationship. This dynamic crops up most frequently in domestic abuse relationships or dynamics, whether in a family context or a romantic one. It might look like an abusive, abusive partner consistently hiding your car keys or your wallet and then telling you, you always forget you where you put them. It could be a family member telling you you've said or done things that you don't remember and that are contrary to your actual values, and then feigning concern about your mental health or memory when you disagree with their account. In these circumstances, gaslighting is, number one, repeated and persistent. Number two, does not offer any immediate gain to the person perpetrating it. And number three, has the primary goal of calling your reliability into question. Here are some examples of gaslighting to include your partner saying things like, I think you're overreacting. Don't you think that's a little dramatic? Come on, you know that's not what happened. What is gaslighting not? It's important to know gaslighting is different than simply lying, although that's still bad. Gaslighting extends beyond simply telling someone something you know to be untrue. It's a <clears throat> excuse me, it's a form of manipulation that often involves lying about something with no obvious benefit, systematically and consistently over a period of time, while suggesting tacitly or explicitly that the core of the issue is the target's ability to correctly make sense of things. The goal of gaslighting is less to get away with a specific lie or pass off a specific untruth, but to psychologically destabilize the other person. Gaslighting also doesn't usually accomplish an immediate aim. It's a long-term strategy to discredit another person as a corollary to a bigger project. Thus, a politician claiming they reduced violent crime when data shows the opposite, or even backtracking on a statement everyone heard them make, isn't gaslighting, it's just lying. And although it can be very frustrating and even toxic, your partner telling you they didn't do or say something that you know they did usually isn't gaslighting either. However, it could be a precursor to gaslighting or other toxic manipulative forms of abuse. What should you do if you recognize these signs of gaslighting in your life? The core of the experience of being gaslit is not feeling like you can trust your own perceptions or experiences, and it can be crucial to bring in a new perspective you trust to help you stay connected to reality. If you feel unsure of your reality or the relationship in your life, working with a trusted therapist is key. A professional counselor can help you make sense of what's happening and give you an expert view on the real dynamics at play in your relationship. If you're in a dynamic with a risk of gaslighting that you can't easily remove yourself from, it can be useful to begin documenting things. Take screenshots of texts or email conversations, write things down as they happen or as they're said, tell others about even difficult experiences or conversations so they can serve as an objective record if these experiences are later called into question. If this dynamic is ongoing and shows no signs of abating, it's time to think about whether you need to stay in relationship with this person or not. If it's a relationship that's harder to end, like an immediate family member, it's crucial to start thinking about what boundaries you can maintain for yourself to limit the harm this person may be causing. That's about it, folks. So think about it. Like I said earlier, boundaries are important. Recognizing the difference between lying, gaslighting, because again, people are describing, they're calling a lot of things gaslighting that aren't. So um, yeah, let me know your thoughts.
comment, like, share, and I'll see you next week. Big hugs and kisses to you all. Have a beautiful long weekend. Take care.